Letters, Arts, and Sciences, and uh, the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. So I thought I'd start with a, a little bit of uh, historical background. Uh, back in the, uh, in the Stone Age, uh, about 10, 15 years ago, uh, there was a lot of pessimism on the viability of, of quantum computation. And uh, there were uh, prominent critics, uh, such as uh, Rolf Landauer, who wrote an influential paper in uh, 1995 um, with uh, the title, Is Quantum Mechanics Useful? And in fact, he explained in the introduction that uh, his title was a little sweeping, and he didn't really mean to, to critique all of quantum mechanics. Uh, but uh, <coughs> in fact, his, his target was really quantum computation. And this was uh, shortly after the publication of Shor's algorithm. Uh, so Landauer uh, made the uh, important observations uh, that quantum computation was likely to be very fragile. In particular, he, he pointed out uh, that the computation is likely to suffer from localization, uh, by which he meant something like Anderson localization. And that's not an issue that's received a lot of attention uh, in the quantum computing literature. But then his second point was that um, <coughs> quantum computation might suffer from the following problem. Uh, Additionally, small errors, he wrote, will accumulate and cause the computation to go off track. And now this, uh, this was a very uh, insightful critique, uh, which um, of course has to do with, with decoherence. And Landau went on to uh, say, uh, uh, make some qualitative statements uh, to this effect. Um, and he inspired some, uh, some additional works. Uh, for example, a paper by, by Bill Unruh, which was published in the same year in which he acknowledges as, uh, uh, Landauer's uh, uh, insights into, uh, into this issue. And uh, Unruh decided to uh, make a calculation to, to check whether quantum computers could actually function in the presence of noise. And he writes in the abstract, it is found that for quantum calculations in which the maintenance of coherence over a large number of states is important, not only must the coupling be small, but the time taken in the quantum calculation must be less than the thermal time scale h bar over kt. So he was able to show by analyzing a spin boson model uh, that quantum computers would, uh, would not be able to survive very long. And in his conclusions, uh, he makes the following statement. The above analysis has given a preliminary look at the effects of decoherence on quantum computers. It suggests that this problem is going to require some serious thought in order to design systems to avoid the disastrous effects that the loss of coherence due to the coupling to the environment can cause. So serious thought was, was indeed required. And fortunately, it didn't take very long. And uh, in 1995, uh, same year, uh, Peter Shore, and then shortly followed by Andrew Steen, uh, uh, published uh, papers uh, which showed for the first time the viability of, of quantum computing in the presence of decoherence. And their insight was to use uh, quantum error correcting codes. So uh, Shore's paper, um, entitled Scheme for Reducing Decoherence in Quantum Computing Memory, uh, pointed out, uh, let me read again from the abstract, it has shown how to reduce the effects of decoherence for information stored in quantum memory, assuming that the decoherence process acts independently on each of the bits stored in memory. This involves the use of a quantum analog of error correcting codes. So uh, critical insight, which was uh, then also um, pointed out by, by Andrew Steen, in his, uh, I would say, almost companion paper to, to Shor's paper, Error Correcting Codes in Quantum Theory, Steen wrote, a natural link is then revealed between basic quantum theory and the linear error correcting codes of classical information theory. So uh, Shor and Steen uh, set the scene for what was to come, and uh, what was to come is uh, going to be uh, talked about a lot uh, at this conference. Uh, so I'm uh, looking uh, forward greatly to hearing about all the, the most recent developments in the subject. Uh, so let me, let me end the historical introduction with this and uh, mention a few uh, technical issues. Uh, first of all, regarding uh, the location of lunch, it is going to be uh, in the vineyard room, uh, which is on, on the ground level.